right, without further ado, here's Dr. Khan. And last thing, um, we could do a couple questions at the end. You could type them in the chat box and uh, we can um, go through them at the end. Okay, thank you. All right, hello everybody. This is Joel Kahn zooming into your living room, study, kitchen, or maybe your bathtub, but be careful with electronics if you're in your bathtub. Uh, it is actually my 43rd year of eating only plants. You know, it's not exactly the Olympics, but I'm still alive. I'm pretty healthy at 61, like no medication, no heart disease. And it is also the best decision I made at age 18. Wasn't aware of all the reasons. It was just a really good salad bar at the University of Michigan and everything else looking like dead horse meat, which in fact, it was dead horse meat that uh, started the process, but it's a much more advanced process now. Uh, I will say uh, very appropriately that along the way, I think now 21 years ago, I encountered a little group called Veggies in Motion, which became Veg Michigan. Uh, and I'm going through withdrawals, not having a Veg Fest uh, this year, but uh, we had to accommodate, you know, worldwide crisis. And thanks to Veg Michigan and Tom and team for at least allowing these great educational activities to occur by technology. But I hope we can get back together and have 7,000 people and all kinds of good, safe fun uh, very soon. We can certainly eat healthy. And I, I think the only silver lining in a very tough three, four months is a lot more people were eating at home. Some chose to do that by carrying in Jet's Pizza, and some chose to do that by eating fresh food and uh, plant food and healthy food. So I hope you're one of them. And if not, at the end of this, I hope you will be. So Tom mentioned, you know, a focus on immune. Um, somewhere in the emails, uh, I am very capable of talking about that. Let me give a little bit more broad plant-based look, 2020. It really is a miracle. Um, I spent a lot of time on podcasts, interviews, TV shows, talking to people that are on meat diets, all meat diets, partial meat diets. They have nothing to show for it and they will suffer the consequences. We got lots of good stuff. So, you know, if you're on the fence, if you're plant curious, if you're vegetarian, these aren't judgments, just questions, and you're not sure you want to give up the last thing, the chicken, the fish, the dairy, I want to uh, go through some of what's going on out there. Well, I've shown this slide of wonderful Beyonce for a couple of years and her uh, personal trainer, Marco Borges, who is one of the most energetic plant-based business people and trainers in the world. He's in Miami. But this week we got another star, uh, Lizzo. And some of you know who Lizzo is. And this is in her first week of being vegan, at least publicly. Uh, eating a plant-based and she's gotten press all over the place so I wish her well but why is she doing this why are athletes and if you don't remember we used to have sports teams or we used to have sporting events we don't have too many right now uh, hopefully they'll come back but why are more and more athletes routinely saying that they feel so much better when they give up animal products why is one of the uh, great champion weightlifters of the world and others in the Olympics and gold medalists choosing to eat no animal products and still setting world records and succeeding. Why more and more in a world that seems at times very unkind are we realizing that personal decisions, we can decide if we're gonna harm animals or not harm animals. And in some sense, it's a vote for kindness. And it just doesn't seem like too many people are talking about kindness right now. Albert Einstein talked about, you know, survival of the planet, survival of human health, survival of humanity. And then there is, as uh, I think Tom Proger mentioned, there is the environment and the planet. And, you know, what amazing data that for two or three months when the economy slowed or stopped, which was a very unfortunate event, the rivers cleaned up, the air cleaned up, uh, animal life resumed in many parts of the world. Um, and uh, we are not doing well to our Mother Earth. And a lot of it is, not all of it, a lot of it is the intensity of resources to create meat, create dairy, create uh, poultry, uh, create uh, eggs. It's a very, very environmentally you know, intense event. I'm learning how to use my scroller. 
So the amazing thing is maybe the appeal that you want to feel good and look good, maybe the idea that you want to get rid of medication or diseases, maybe the idea that being part of the solution for the planet and part of the solution for kindness. You know, we can't control every cruel moment in the world, but every time you put your fork into tofu, you voted for kindness. And every time you put your fork into a chicken breast, in some sense, without getting too judgmental, uh, it wasn't a kind moment in the chicken's life. So we need kindness. And this plate was introduced in 2009, 11 years ago by Dr. Neil Barnard and his Physician Committee for Responsible Medicine. If you've never heard of PCRM.org, uh, go to their website. If we had a VegFest, you know that there's all kinds of brochures from PCRM.org or handouts. But I wanna reassure you, if you do what this plate says, you eat a variety of fruits, legumes, which are beans, peas, lentils, sometimes called pulses in the Bible, whole grains, brown rice, 100% uh, whole wheat, quinoa, spelt, barley, buckwheat, and you eat a variety of vegetables. You can see there, there's a whole variety. I see broccoli, I see asparagus, I see avocados, some radishes, uh, maybe a, a white onion, and a whole variety. You will not have any concerns about protein, uh, adequate variety of vitamins, adequate variety of fiber, and you can see that there's a glass there of water. It's not a glass of Mountain Dew. It's not a glass of whole milk. It's not a glass of goat's milk. Uh, you will have you know, the best chance of using your diet to either restore your health or maintain your health. And you won't need a whole lot of fancy stuff around it. There's so much discussion about adequate protein and the rest, and it simply isn't the case. That is a very healthy diet. So what is this vegan? We, uh, you know, we call ourselves Veg Michigan, and Veg is the beginning of the word vegetarian and vegan. But veganism started up in 1944 as an official movement. There were many people before this that described a diet we call vegan. But the word was actually coined in 1944 in London as a way of living without harm, without exploitation, without cruelty, and specifically animals. And again, we need to apply perhaps the same principles to humanity as is the goal here of the animal world. But you know, we for sure today can control our expression of kindness and love through our plate. That was the British concept, be a vegan. As Mr. Rogers said, as he was always uh, a spokesman for kindness and avoiding pain, I don't wanna eat anything that has a mother so if you think about it, some people extend it to say anything that has a mother and a face. If you think about an egg, you think about a shrimp, you think about a cow, you think about uh, pretty much any animal product, it'll meet that definition. Uh, it's a very kind statement. I kind of like humor, so I would advise you to use as a criteria, uh, you know, when you go to buy a lamb chop or go to buy a chicken breast or go to buy a flank steak or a shrimp uh, cocktail. Uh, don't eat anything that poops. It's probably from a health cleanliness standpoint, that's a good rule. And from the fact that that's a living creature in the animal kingdom uh, will make sense. So those are some easy rules. I don't own this t-shirt. I probably should get one because I say it so much. So I always, every public lecture, and I, God, I do a lot of public lectures by now, technology, but I talk about heart before I'm going to circle back to plants, because plants are the solution, but you may not be motivated to transition your diet from semi-vegetarian to full vegetarian or full vegetarian to full vegan, unless you know a little bit about heart disease. And going back 400 years ago, this very dapper man, Dr. Thomas Seidenham, very famous physician in London, even though the map shows Saudi Arabia, I still haven't figured that out. Uh, talked about how if we knew how old our arteries are, we would know how old we are. You know, two people that are 60 years old can be uh, aging very differently, can look very different. But really, the money is figuring out if their arteries are clean and arteries are dirty. So number one, I call this P of PDR, P for prevent. It's simply absolutely true. Dr. Esselstyn says it all the time. We don't need to have heart attacks. We don't need to have 650,000 people a year 
uh, dying of heart attacks and more suffering them but surviving. Uh, because we know even if we just take a gentle approach to our lifestyle, I don't think these are big deals. Don't smoke, walk 30 to 40 minutes every day trying to achieve a thinner waistline. If you like numbers, less than 40 inches for a man, but you can go to 36, 34. Less than 35 inches for a woman, but you can go 32 or 30. Eat more than five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. That takes some planning. If your refrigerator has none, you're not going to eat any. Um, you can, you know, perhaps use certain veg capsules, fruit capsules, fruit powders. What we're really talking about is having a freezer full of frozen fruits and vegetables and regularly, maybe twice a week, going to the grocery store or the farmer's market or your own garden, start sprouting. One of the cheapest ways to have fresh produce in the house is get a few broccoli seeds, a few lentils, a few... Uh, mung bean seeds, soak them and grow sprouts. That's what I do in my house now. I don't do it in soil now, I do it in mason jars. It's just easier and cleaner. Get a lot, eat an apple, eat a salad, eat broccoli, eat the rainbow colors. Sleep every night, and I hate to say it, the data consistently shows that a few alcoholic beverages a week are statistically contribute to preventing heart attacks. I don't make this data up. As you can see, this is data from about 40,000 people of a few years ago in Europe. But we can prevent our chance of having a heart attack dramatically. Start at age 15, 20, 25, 30. It's going to be even more powerful. But start today would be good. The one of these, if I had to ask you, guess, that Americans on average do the least. Well, 15 to 20 percent of Americans smoke. So 80 to 85 percent of people do don't smoke. It's estimated 50% of people walk half an hour a day. That's a good deal. Uh, sleep seven to eight hours a night. I don't know the exact statistics, but it's about 50%. How many people have a few alcoholic beverages a week? That's one we all do great on, 80%. But how many people eat five or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day? It's a very small number. It's under 5% of Americans. It's under 3% of children. So if you don't want to have a heart attack, adopt this. Veg Michigan, whole food, real food. We're not talking about potato chips and Mountain Dew. And do the other parts of this too. Let me just go back for a minute. Just last week, a major study from Chicago was published in a big medical journal. I don't want to get Alzheimer's. And they had about 3,000 people followed for a number of years. Exact same idea. They asked hundreds of questions. They found five things that predicted not developing Alzheimer's as you age in life. They were exactly the same five things with the addition of some mind games like playing puzzles, uh, learning a second language, um, you know, using mathematical skills and things like that. So you can add right on to this, how do you prevent Alzheimer's by 60%? Try and prevent a heart attack, it does the same job. So uh, still a little cardiology talk before we get to beans and peas and lentils. And that is the fact that doctors, I'm giving you inside tips here from a guy who's been a cardiologist for over 30 years. I just passed my 30th anniversary of practicing cardiology, uh, July 1. We are not good at telling you at your visit, hey, you're going to do great this year. Pat you on the back. There's no heart worry at all. Because if you look at the picture, Nobody would have had a physical exam with Winston Churchill and said, Winston, you're doing great. Keep smoking. Stay obese. Eat British food. You're going to live to 91. And on the other hand, who wouldn't have patted on the back one of the world's fittest men in the 1970s, Jim Fix, who dropped dead of massive heart problems at age 53. He looked good on the outside, unlike Winston Churchill, but he was rotten to the core inside. He also had one of the worst diets of you know, donuts and french fries and corned beef sandwiches and pizza, pepperoni and the like. So this is my plea. The only good vegan is a living vegan. Not that people that have passed on don't have good memories, but good vegans are living vegans. You can go to your local hospital. I don't know if you're watching this locally, Beaumont, St. John, Providence, Genesis, Huron Valley, I'm sure I left out a couple, for about a hundred bucks. And nobody's going to restaurants right now, largely. So for 100 bucks that you might have spent last couple months at a restaurant, you can get a CT scan that takes five seconds. 
no needle, no injection. And you might be one of these three people, but you don't know, Winston Churchill didn't know, and Jim Fix didn't know. You wanna be person A. This quick CT scan shows you the heart arteries and shows you that they're young, just like Dr. Seidenham said. Keep on eating your plants, you're gonna to live to 100. In the middle panel, those white spots where the yellow areas are early signs of aging arteries. Better make some changes, better do five of five in terms of those steps to prevent a heart attack. The scariest one is about 10% of people right now, just 10% of all the people you know out there from church, from school, from work, from the grocery store, wherever it is, are like panel C, severe bone-like arteries, so brittle, so diseased, so advanced in age. But that doesn't mean there's any symptoms, doesn't mean there's any warning, doesn't mean the physical exam at the doctor's office is gonna be abnormal, doesn't necessarily mean even the routine blood work is abnormal. Uh, it obviously could be a smoker, a person with advanced diabetes, a person with a cholesterol 400, but not always. And for about $100, the test is right there, coronary artery calcium score. You can get it at any hospital. You have to ask a doctor in Michigan for a prescription, $100, it's out of your pocket. You uh, usually don't have insurance coverage for it, which is one of the greatest tragedies around. But you better know your score. And if you got good news, that doesn't mean go eat cheeseburgers and bacon hot dogs. It means eat a whole food plant-based diet and you're probably not going to have health problems for a long time. But if you're over at number C, you better come see me in my clinic. That's just uh, the reality of it in Bingham Farms, Michigan. All right, so we quickly discussed how to prevent heart disease, eat plants. We click, quickly described how to detect silent heart disease. It's not about plants, it's about technology. You need a CT scan. But let's talk about the ability. This is still, to me, amazing. Uh, data that goes back 70 years, probably the most famous data goes back 30 years, that you can do things wrong. This is like the greatest news. Doc, you're telling me, I used to have a bad diet, bad exercise, I smoked for a while, I clogged up my arteries, you're telling me if I can just get over those habits, I can actually get rid of some of this disease and you know, actually become younger inside. And the reality is we know you can. So if I take you back, how many years is that? That's uh, 69 years in Los Angeles. A internal medicine doc created this diet for his heart patients. He put this on a piece of paper. I don't want you eating liver. I don't want you eating cream or cheddar cheese. Skip the egg yolks. I really don't want you to eat things like croissants. And I don't want you using oil-rich fats, chicken or pork fat, lard. And please, like rich gravies and olives and nuts. Um, he gave this list to 50 heart patients in his practice. And he told the other 50, we don't know that diet really matters. This was 1949, 1950, 1951. So just keep on going. And he followed his patients. Now, this is a time, no bypass, no stents, no coronary care units. And it turns out there was 100 of these patients. He published the data. In the group, if you look at the lower paragraph, the, the group, they lost weight. They went from 166 to 145 pounds if you're a man. I don't know how many 145-pound men you know in America nowadays, but in 1951, there were some. Women dropped their weight from 141 to 124. And amazingly, on average, in the 50 of the 100 that followed that diet sheet, they dropped their cholesterol 100 points without any medication. There was no medication. Well, it didn't matter. And that's what's amazing about the data Dr. Morrison published. If you look at how many people were alive 12 years after starting Dr. Morrison's clinic, if they were in that low-fat diet sheet group, kind of what we teach at Veggie Michigan. Eat fruits, eat vegetables, eat beans, eat peas. Don't smother them with butter. Probably don't smother them with coconut oil. Don't smother them with rich fat gravies. If you followed the low-fat group, half of the patients were alive. Should have been all of them, but in 1951, there only was limited resources. None of the patients who ate like a typical American, and all these people had heart disease, none were alive at 12 years. So stunning data. That jumps us to the mid-1970s when an aerospace engineer named Nathan Pritikin, who had no medical training but had a super bright mind, started doing research because his cholesterol was over 300. He had it checked. 
And he was worried in his early 40s that he had heart disease, of which there was some evidence he did. He developed a program for himself of eating whole foods and exercising. And he saw dramatic results in his own health. His cholesterol fell from over 300 to 120. His stress test, which was abnormal, became normal. He felt great. He kept on doing his aerospace engineering business, but he started writing medical papers about the results he was seeing with people he was telling about what he had done. And he got some doctors with him so that he didn't have to fly as a, a non-MD at medical meetings. And he wrote a book that sold millions of copies and went on 60 Minutes uh, one night. And it was the most popular episode in 1977, seen by millions of people. And he set up something called the Pritikin Longevity Center. And he published research. This is 1991 and 4,566 people that for three weeks ate the plant diet, the whole food plant diet, salads, beans, peas, fruits, whole grains. They dropped their cholesterol 25% in just three weeks. They dropped their weight 3% in just three weeks. Many were able to get off medication. And if they kept going, they showed signs of reversing their heart disease, losing their symptoms, feeling better. And he was a big dreamer. All I wanna do is wipe out heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, obesity. And we know that that's possible in the majority of people. It takes hard work, you have to change your habits, but it's food, it's food, it's food, it's food. And a heart CT scan, that's not food. And really the guy that nailed it, and this is such a funny picture, but the gentleman with the tie is a medical doctor who grew up in Dallas, and in his early 20s as a medical student, he had learned a lot about Eastern medicine, yoga, meditation, plant diets from this world famous uh, guru named um, Sachi Dananda. And Dr. Ornish embarked by raising money as a medical student to do research in 1979, published in 1983. But then he got more money to do a real study. What if we take people with heart disease, serious heart disease, blocked arteries, and we tell them to eat this pyramid, eat vegetables, eat fruits, eat beans, eat peas, eat lentils, eat whole grains like corn, rice, oats, and wheat, eat non-fat products like cereal, soup, tofu, crackers, and non-fat dairy because in 1985, there were no whole foods and he was worried people wouldn't have enough to eat. So he made a couple concessions. Number two, exercise, that could be walking. Number three, stress reduction, a little yoga. Number four was no smoking. And he got the money to do what's called a randomized study. He got patients with moderate to severe heart disease. Some were left alone. Some were put on that diet and lifestyle program that was a low fat, whole food. He called it vegetarian diet because people were allowed to choose some non-fat dairy if they wanted to. He had enough money and uh, support that he got these patients to go through a procedure I do called a heart catheterization. He got them to do it three times at baseline before they started the study, one year after joining the Ornish diet group or the control group, and five years later. The control group was just told to eat whatever their cardiologist told them to eat, which is usually whatever you want. And the treatment group are the people eating a whole food plant-based diet, not smothered in butter, and avocado and oils. And they did a angiogram, a very advanced heart test at, one, at baseline one year and five years. If you look at the black dot, if you have heart disease of any kind, and probably saying if your carotid arteries are clogged, your leg arteries, and you don't change your diet, because these people were seeing cardiologists, so they were on medication, your arteries get worse and worse and worse. The amount of blockage goes from 40% to 52%, in five years on average. But if you're willing to learn to eat different, not bad stuff, just different stuff, healthy stuff, colorful stuff, fiber stuff, plant stuff, you can see that the blockage goes from 41% down to 38, down to 37%. You actually can reverse it. And the miracle is the way fluid dynamic engineering goes. Small, small improvements means a lot of extra blood flow. So this was a very profound enhancement of the lifestyle and wellness. Now that was 1998. It took another 12 years 
but our government, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, said, boy, Pritikin's data is pretty amazing. He can reverse heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and help people do better. Ornish's data is absolutely amazing. He's shown you can reverse heart disease and keep people out of the hospital and reduce costs. So you can now go to St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor after a heart attack, after a stent, after a bypass, and your insurance will pay for you to do a Pritikin cardiac rehab program. It took a long time to get approval, but it's approved. And just recently in Grand Blanc or Flint, it's called Advanced Cardiovascular Wellness, but there's a cardiology practice that has an Ornish program. Sadly, all the big hospitals in Detroit, Beaumont, St. John, Providence, um, Huron Valley, DMC, do not have these programs. They are missing out on providing this advanced reversal program to patients. But one day, one day, one day, I hope. I tried hard at Beaumont, they just wouldn't bite on it. All right, you can't talk about reversing heart disease without at least two minutes on the smiliest, kindest, most admirable uh, physician on the planet, Dr. Esselstyn, a surgeon. There he is in the surgical locker room. But he got so interested in heart disease, he actually left the practice of surgery to become a heart disease reversal specialist. In this study over 12 years, he told really sick heart patients, eat just like everything else we talked about. Eat every whole grain, every legume, lentil, beans, peas, every vegetable on the planet, every fruit. You can eat mangoes, you can eat papayas, you can eat watermelon, you can eat strawberries, raspberries, you can eat cherries, you can eat bananas all day long, white potatoes, orange potatoes, purple potatoes, whatever you want. But don't eat animal products smothered in oil. And he showed you can reverse heart disease. 1996, badly blocked heart artery. 1999, clean as a copper tone baby artery without bypass, without stents. Very dramatic. What I'm excited about and why I always talk about this is here in 2020, I see the same thing, but I don't use angiograms of the heart. I do a ultrasound of the carotids. That's what a CIMT is. It's a very special digital ultrasound. So there's no radiation, no pain. It's an office test. And for example, if you look on where it says left, that's the artery to the brain. Used to be 41% blocked. Now it's 21% blocked. On the right carotid, used to be 35% blocked. Now it's 20% blocked. And this is just routine when you add in, you change. You take away the foods that cause harm. Donuts, bagels, white flour, white sugar, lard, butter, meats, cheeses, egg yolks, chicken, turkey, pork. You take those away and you teach people how to make oatmeal, how to make bean chilies, how to make bean soups, how to make gigantic salads, how to make a smoothie, uh, and on and on. And uh, you see this. So it's not old science, even though it has a long tradition. It works every day. So I'm most excited. When I was in medical school long ago, we knew we were born with clean arteries. We were, by the time we were in college, if we went having some disease in our arteries, by the time we were having kids, we had more disease in our arteries. And by the time we were thinking about retiring, we had our heart attacks, our strokes, our erectile dysfunction. Now we know the yellow arrow that we can go backwards. And if we start early enough, this will never happen. But even if it's happened, we can make it go the other direction, which is what we should be teaching. One of the local heroes, just to put a face to some of this, and some of you know who this is, but in 1990 to 1994, this hunky gentleman, Mark Ramirez, was playing tackle or end for the University of Michigan Wolverines. He was Latino background. His family had many, many cases of complicated diabetes, but he was a strong, strapping, 300-pound meat-eating machine. The problem was 10 years later with children, he was no longer working out five hours a day for the football team. Like many people, not just him, weight gain, blood pressure up, uh, energy down. He, by this point, was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which his other family members had. And very soon he was on lots of medications, diabetic medication, blood pressure medication, cholesterol medication, insulin injections, you know, poking his finger. It doesn't show it here. He was needing to get Viagra for a healthy male response. 
and he was sick and tired. But what do you do? You go to your doctor, they renew your prescription, they talk to you about your lab results, and they'll see you in six or 12 months. His in laws, about seven years ago, gave him two things gave him a copy of the movie Forks Over Knives on DVD, and gave him a copy of a book called Reversing Diabetes by a Physician in Washington. And after struggling with diabetes and blood pressure and cholesterol for a decade, nobody had ever said the word reversing. In fact, it says the word reversing twice on the cover, reversing diabetes and reversing diabetes without drugs. And if somebody's desperate or somebody's curious or somebody's open-minded, that should set your brain on fire. And it did set Mark Ramirez's brain on fire. What if I could get off? What if I could feel good? What if I could you know, get back to my full health? And lo and behold, within three, four months, the medicines were gone. This picture is probably four or five years later, but he is an absolute muscle machine. And he's just one example of many where his blood work's now normal, no medication. It was just changing from standard American garbage diet to the healthiest diet on the planet. And he goes around teaching for Veg Michigan and his own group and others. And there's so many other examples like this but it's just great to see that. Now, can you mess up? You can mess up. If you eat in the teenager vegan column, the Oreos, the Doritos, the Cracker Jacks, you will not get good nutrition. You will not have a good immune system. Uh, you will be vitamin deficient. And in the long run, it does not work out well. There's Harvard School of Public Health data that says that. But that's why we often shy away from the word vegan, which has an ethical animal kindness word, to the word whole food plant diet. I don't even like the word plant-based, I like plant diet, because that's all I eat is plants, 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 plants of every kind. Well, you can see on that plate, colors, uh, whites from flour, but it's you know whole corn, round rice and black beans and tomatoes and cilantro, and uh, you know you put some salsa on top, it's gonna have some peppers, and you know, there's probably about 10 different food items there that have hundreds and hundreds of natural healthy chemicals. You want to eat whole food plant-based uh, diet, whole food plant diet. Another problem that's potential, and it's true of Americans in general, it's just us plant-based eaters are smart enough to be honest. There's a lot of people are low in vitamin D, a lot of people might be low in B12, and a lot of people are low in getting enough omega-3. Omega-3, if you're really regular about eating, and I teach my patients, two, three tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed, chia seeds, hemp hearts, two or three tables a day on oatmeal, in salad, on soups, in a smoothie. B12, you can get from nutritional yeast. You can get from, there's a interesting little plant called the lentine, related to the lentil that is B12, and you can get it from um, nori rolls that you might find in vegan sushi. But most experts, including me, say don't risk it. At least get a blood test, but maybe just take B12. And vitamin D, most Americans are deficient in vitamin D. Vegans are deficient in vitamin D. Mushrooms are a good source. Some of the plant milks like oat milk, soy milk, hemp milk are fortified. But you might consider, there's a lot of talk right now with COVID about getting enough omega-3 and getting enough vitamin D as a immune booster. So if you're eating a plant diet and you don't normally take multivitamins or specifically these kind of supplements, you might want to right now in the world of COVID. Um, I'm taking a little detour here because right now in the news, in the past two weeks, you might find articles that say, we did it all wrong. If your cholesterol is high, you can eat all the foods you like, those meats, those cheese, those bacon, those cheese pizzas, just cut back on the refined carbs. Do a low carb, ketogenic, Dr. Atkins diet, even if your cholesterol is 500, that's what you should do. There's two articles in the news in the last three weeks, scientific publications that are awful, but that's what they're saying. And I just want to run through that. So there was a famous professor, University of Minnesota named Dr. Keyes, and in the early 1950s, when very few people had a theory about diet and heart disease, Dr. Morrison was obviously one of them, but not many were. Dr. Keyes took a group of researchers to Italy to study what we now call the Mediterranean diet before it was really known to be so healthy. And he designed a study across the world 
does it matter how much saturated fat is in your diet? So actually, I'm going to go to the next slide for a minute. And this looks at, if you look at the bottom, average intake of saturated fat. What's saturated fat? Saturated fat is the fat, you put it in a jar, you put it in your refrigerator, and it hardens up. What does that? Lard does that. Butter will do that. Coconut oil will do that. Um, the fat in meat will do that. The fat in cheese will do it. The fat in egg yolks could do it if you gave it a chance. The fat in pork and um, poultry will do that. The hardening fat that can harden your arteries. And in the study Dr. Keyes did, the countries where they ate a lot of saturated fat in their diet, a lot of meat, cheese, sausage, like Finland, had the highest CHD, the highest risk of dying of coronary heart disease or heart attack. More saturated fat, like country E, more risk of dying of heart disease. Low saturated fat, like country T, which was Japan, the lower the risk of dying of heart disease. Um, that was 1958 through 1970. Um, right now, these two studies are saying this is wrong. But I want to show you in April 2020, a gigantic cardiology study was published called the ischemia study. And all these years of arguing, is meat good or bad? Are egg yolks good or bad? Is butter good or bad? Saturated fat rich foods. This study was published over 5,000 men and women with very serious heart disease. Just look at the red black box and the blue box. Very serious heart disease. Some of them went right on to have what's called a heart catheterization, a stent and a bypass. Exactly half of them. The other half were told, we think we can treat your serious heart disease with medication, diet, and fitness. Sounds a lot like Dr. Ornish, but Dr. Ornish only had 48 patients. This study has 5,179. If you look at what they told these patients to do, they told them to eat a low saturated fat diet. Who else told them to do that? Dr. Morrison in 1950, Mr. Pritikin, Dr. Ornish, Dr. Esselstyn, and Ansel Keys. So this is not old data. This was published in April 2020. They also told them don't smoke and get regular exercise, like Dr. Ornish, like Mr. Pritikin. So what did they find? In these 5,179 serious heart patients who either agreed by randomization, I'll take medicine, eat low saturated fat and exercise, or others that went right on to stent or bypass. No difference over five years in your chance of dying. Why rush to an operation? Why rush to a procedure? Why not eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, peas, lentils, and water instead of pizza and bacon and cheeseburgers and uh, you know eggs uh, and frittatas? It still works in 2020 just like it worked before. So going back, 2009, pcrm.org, you should go visit it, said, you can do fine eating only plants in your diet and you'll do well, and we know that's true. Two years later, Harvard said, not everybody's gonna eat only plants, but this is what Harvard says we should eat. Half your plate is fruit and vegetables, a quarter of your plate are healthy whole grains, just like PCRM said, brown rice, uh, grains, whole grain pasta. But we should eat healthy protein, and they say in the small print, that could be tempeh, edamame, tofu, beans, peas, lentils, or if you want a tiny little bit of animal product, make sure it's healthy. It's not bacon and it's not salami. Of course, I don't endorse any meats at all, but uh, the Harvard plate looks just like our plant-based plate. And even as recently as a few months back, Canada came up with its recommendation for the first time in over a decade. Same concept. We know where the health is. The health is on that plate rich in fiber from fruits and vegetables, whole grains of every kind, 100% whole wheat bread, and uh, beans, peas, lentils, and the like. So as our uh, leader in Detroit for a few years in cardiology, now a leader in Chicago said, why do you eat a plant-based diet? His answer was, I don't mind dying. I just don't want it to be my fault. So, you know, what's the point of all that? The point of all that is you can maximize, nearly completely protect yourself from the risk of heart attack, stroke, diabetes type two, erectile dysfunction. Uh, now we know certain cancers like prostate and breast, 
certain connective tissue diseases like uh, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus by focusing on the quality of your diet, the purity of your diet, the color of your diet, uh, and spending adequate time to learn how to cook a few simple meals at home, uh, not outsourcing your nutrition to fast food and other places. In terms of immunity, um, there is suggestive data. If you, again, take out the foods that harm our immune system, take out processed food, take out added fats, take out added sugar, put in brightly colored fruit and vegetables. You want a lot of vitamin C in your diet for immune function. Where's that? Fruits and vegetables, brightly colored. There's no vitamin C in meat, no vitamin C in chicken, no vitamin C in eggs, no vitamin C in pork. Humans don't make vitamin C. So right now during COVID, you want to eat a lot of vitamin C rich foods, which are fruits and vegetables. You want some vitamin D for your immune function. Where's vitamin D? Mushrooms are a real good source. You might want to supplement. There's an interesting antioxidant called quercetin, or quercetin, if you want to say it, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N. Where do you find it? Apples, cherries, onions, and garlic. Not chicken, not meat, not egg yolk. Uh, it's a good one. Um, some people are saying melatonin at night may help our immune system. Well, dark tart cherries are a great source of melatonin. So if you want to do it naturally, get uh, a regular load of cherries in the house. You know, wonderful, wonderful addition to your diet, brightly colored. Um, zinc uh, is being mentioned for immune function. There's quite a bit of zinc in sesame seeds uh, and actually seeds in general, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Uh, that you might consider pumpkin seeds and Brazil nuts have a lot of selenium, another component of good health. So all you need for your immune function is going to be by taking out the bad, putting in the good, taking out the process, putting in the whole, taking out the animal, putting in the plant, and you should do really, really well. So I don't know here now if we have the ability, and I thank again, Veg Mishkin, Tom Proger, uh, and the whole group, and Kate Brown for setting this up. We have the ability to answer a few questions. Um, I see a few comments, but I think they're administrative. But I do see a few. Um, I, there's a question about vision. And uh, after eating lots of kale and collard green, vision is improving. Well, you know, that is possible. And it's a great story you're sharing, Brenda. You know, we don't focus on vision a lot. There are plant-based ophthalmologists that stress same reason, vitamin C and other nutrients that plant-based diets have the best chance. As you know, there are some antioxidants with fancy names, lutein, zeaxanthin, um, that are found in plants. So when you're eating that, you know, like you said, every day I had collard greens and kale, you probably maximized, you know, vitamin K2 and other nutrients. So that is a remarkable and wonderful, wonderful story. Uh, somebody told me the Zoom was freezing. I hope that didn't happen everywhere. I actually did not sense that. So it might be your local Wi-Fi. Uh, and sorry if that is, it's going to be recorded. So maybe when you watch the recording, uh, you'll be able to do a little better uh, with that. Dr. Any Dr. other questions? Oh, that can you have? see the, um, on the question and answer? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, so the one that there's one from Brenda about reading. Yeah, I did that one already. Okay, and yeah. then. And we oh. just got one from Court C. When you reference chia seeds, are you measuring the dry seed or when it's hydrated? I'm talking two teaspoons, excuse me, that's wrong. Two tablespoons of dried ground flaxseed, two tablespoons of ground hemp hearts or whole hemp hearts, and two tablespoons of. Uh, the dried chia seed. Uh, of course, it'll be much more volume when you soak it and let chia seeds hydrate. Um, that number is actually calculated for ground flaxseed, the, something very highbrow called the Institute of Medicine, calculated for an average man or woman. Two tablespoons a day of ground flaxseed provides all the omega-3 fatty acids that your body needs. I'm converting it to two tablespoons of hemp hearts, two tablespoons of chia seeds, the numbers haven't been absolutely worked out for those. And I like to rotate, they're all delicious. But are you gonna put ground flaxseed, hemp hearts, or chia seeds on your food if you don't have any in your house? No. If you don't have any in a nice, easy to get to container, maybe in the refrigerator or on the counter, no. Make it easy. Same thing, are you gonna eat fruit if it's in the crisper in the refrigerator and it's all brown and beaten up? No. If you have a fruit bowl on the counter and you're looking at it and you're hungry, you'll grab an apple or a clementine rather than 
a cookie because it's right there. So make it easy for you. Anybody else? I mean, I have answered the questions here. If anybody wants more information on that heart CT scan, I have a clinic. I'll give you my email, uh, drkahn at kahncenter.com. Dr. Kahn, D-R-K-A-H-N, at kahncenter, K-A-H-N center.com. Uh, Tom gave me a wonderful introduction. I will say I actually have six books out now because in March I published a book about a special kind of cholesterol that affects 90 million Americans. But the fun part about the book is it's all full of beautiful plant-based recipes too, because there is a way to treat this kind of cholesterol. In fact, there's a way to treat every kind of cholesterol with a whole food plant diet. So it's a nice book, uh, very inexpensive with nice recipes. Uh, lipoprotein A, kind of a funny word. There was a question here, what if I have alcoholism? Is well, there then drink unsweetened grape juice for the grape benefits that are there. Do not drink alcohol. But if you want to, you know, replicate the artery benefits, there's good data that unsweetened grape juice does the job. You can also drink unsweetened pomegranate juice to get amazing good artery health. Some people even drink a little bit of tart cherry juice. Like I said, cherries uh, can boost your melatonin, a little cherry juice before bed. Do you recommend omega-3 from algae? Well, there's, it's a question. There's two uh, answers to it. So there are certain nutrients humans can't make, and we are sitting ducks for deficiency. Actually, vitamin C is one of them. There's only four species on the planet. If you have a dog, your dog can make vitamin C. You can't. If you have a cat, your cat can make vitamin C. You can't. The squirrel out the window can make vitamin C. No human can. So if we don't eat a lot of leafy greens, fruits, and vegetables, we can be vitamin C deficient. Uh, we're all going to get a little, but uh, there's very little in meat, chicken, poultry, and fish. It comes from plants. Omega-3 is the same. We can't make omega-3 that we can use. Um, so we have to outsource it. And when we eat chia, hemp hearts, flax, walnuts, leafy greens, we can stack the odds we're going to get enough omega-3. Um, actually, I'm a fan of eating very oddly chlorella. I like little tablets. I happen to have some sitting here. It's not my company. But chlorella is a green algae with little tablets. My dogs love them. I love them. And very rich in omega-3 along with fiber and 40 nutrients. But of course, I don't have a bottle near me right now, but you can buy a bottle of uh, algae omega-3, strictly vegan, sort of the equivalent of the fish oil capsule, but there's no fish. You don't have to really worry about mercury and contaminants. Um, in my clinic, I measure your blood level. If you're low in omega-3 and you can't get it up high enough with chia, flax, and hemp, I might end up telling you, let's go to a algae supplement. If uh, you're doing fine or you can raise it with uh, diet alone, then I won't do that. Uh, there's a small controversy because there's been dozens of big fish oil studies. There really aren't any big algae omega-3 studies. But like the leading neurologists that you may know, Dr. Shurzai, husband and wife, they take algae omega-3, small amount every day. And it's not expensive. And there are some really, really clean brands out there. Um, but we don't have definitive data. Can, can you hear me or no? My name yes. is Tom. Yes. Can I, can I make a quick comment? Yes. <clears throat> I just want to let you know, uh, Dr. Khan, well, thank you so much, Dr. Khan, really. It was sure. amazing presentation, a lot of great information. And Dr. Khan did mention Mark Ramirez. Uh, if, if you remember the guy from the University of Michigan football team, he is doing a five um, part um, presentation for Veg Michigan starting next Monday called the Plant Plunge. So what it is, is it's going to be five online presentations live that you can sign up for by going to vegmichigan.org, our, our website, vegmichigan.org. And Mark Ramirez and his wife, Kim Ramirez, they do a wonderful presentation. They're going to get in depth of a lot of different topics, show you how to eat better, actually show you a lot of recipes, things like that. So 
Um, if you want to, you know, dive deeper into this, please um, go to vegmission.org, vegmichigan.org, and just look at our events and for the plant plunge. Great, great. I didn't know there wasn't a setup. I wasn't teeing it up for no, amazing no, just, Mark yeah. and Kim Ramirez. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, there is, uh, I think, one more question came in. Then maybe we'll shut it down. Well, what do you do if you have a bad weed allergy? Uh, it's not hard to be gluten-free vegan. There are a few challenges, but there are quinoa, and uh, depending on your sensitivity, uh, some people will eat buckwheat, some won't. Um, but you know, the the you can eat grains, but you're just going to be gluten-free grains uh, and be careful. So. Uh, many people choose not to eat wheat, even those that don't have a true wheat allergy. Um, there are good books and websites about amazing plant-based, healthy, but gluten-free, wheat-free recipes. For the rest of people, generally including 100% whole grains from wheat is a healthy idea, uh, not to be avoided. There was a trend, it's sort of fading. Uh, why don't we all go gluten-free because of a book called Brain Grain and Wheat Belly, but that never was science and it's not really been a hot topic as much anymore. Yeah, and the last question is, is there a concern with supplements for omega-3 of too much? Um, if you look strictly, not vegan science, science, I mean, I'm not talking about taking a whole bottle of fish oil a day, but you can do a blood level and the higher your blood level of omega-3, the long-term health benefit uh, increases. Uh, you know, there is at some point, there's gotta be some Point where it's too much, but generally no. So when you buy algae omega-3, it's compared to a fish oil capsule that's big like a football and usually has a thousand milligrams of omega-3. Most of the algae ones have 300, 400 milligrams. You're not going to be anywhere near overdosing. The only concern is if you don't do that, are you potentially missing out on an important nutrient? So either uh, ask around and get at the blood test, um, eat a lot of ground flax, hemp hearts and chia seeds, which is a great idea. Walnuts, if you're willing, leafy greens, of course you have to, um, or just take a small dose of a reasonable amount of algae omega-3. All you right, John, you wanna shut it down? Avocados. What? Somebody just wondered if there was any reason not to eat avocados besides they're high in fat. Um, yeah, I didn't see that. So if you have, when I showed you the data from Dr. Morrison 1951 and Dr. Ornish 1990 and even Dr. Esselstyn, when they have achieved evidence of heart reversal, they did not include avocados as a recommended food. That's a very small number of patients. Um, <clears throat> I don't have heart disease I'm reversing, I'm preventing. I don't think Tom Proger has heart disease he's reversing, he's probably preventing. So I enjoy, I probably have half an avocado a week. And if I had a whole avocado a week, I also wouldn't worry about it. There is a tremendous amount of fiber in avocados. There are studies that show avocados lower your cholesterol and improve artery health. So for most people, and again, there's always a question, I'm going to put something on my bean burger. Can I put a half an avocado? Well, if you were going to put bacon and cheese and you put half an avocado, you upgraded your bean burger. So it's always what were you going to do? You know, guacamole is an amazing food with tomato, cilantro, and onion. It's the chips that'll, you know, drive you crazy. So maybe dip some celery, dip some carrots. Uh, I love cutting up fennel into slices and dipping with mm -hmm. fennel. It's got an amazing crunchy licorice flavor. All right, Tom, are we done? Um, yeah, thank you very much, Kate. And uh, thank you, Dr. Khan. Thank this you, was so informative. Library. I just thought it was a wonderful event. And Kate, do you have any final thoughts? But um, we really appreciate this event. Thank you so much. No, just wanted to thank all of you for, for coming, especially Dr. Khan. It's been very interesting. Um, I used to go to the big restaurant of Green Space all the time. Um, love that food, so I'll have to check out. I didn't even realize there yeah, was- We have a little one called Green Space and Go, but the food is remarkable. You just know alcoholic beverages. It's a smaller little place. Oh, yeah. the cocktails were lovely at, um, at the Green Space. <laughs> yes, they were. 
maybe another time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, we're getting a lot of great comments. So everyone seemed to have a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Everybody you. have a good evening. Thank Bye -bye. you for coming. You have a nice evening as well. Bye-bye.